It's the last Monday of the month and our money man Stephen Hughes from No Money Inc. is here to help answer some of your questions. And Stephen, this is always a good time. It's good to see you, my friend, because good we always get too. so many questions from our viewers. So this is a great time to answer some of those. And our first question comes from Tiffany here in Columbia. And she says, after graduation, should I consolidate my student loans? Such a great question there. Yeah, and uh, gra with graduation, congrats on that. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to consolidation, there are pros and cons to each. So mm -hmm. uh, the pros, when it comes to consolidation, it makes you gives you one payment that you can do each month. Um, sometimes your rates are going to be better, and your low and your payments may be lowered. But um, that's only if your credit is you know higher than it was when you first took the loan. Okay. As far as your rate being better, so just make sure that you take a look at everything and. When it comes to consolidating, you can't consolidate federal loans with private loans. Okay. So you may be looking at two different things if you have separate um, student loan servicers. So just check all the boxes, make sure you get all the information about what your interest rate is now, what your payments are now, and what they will be going forward. All right, so it can be a good thing, but you want to make sure that you read all the final print and you know exactly what your loans are. Exactly. All right, well, last week news broke about a massive settlement by Equifax over one of the largest data breaches in U.S. history, and we've heard that some people are eligible for compensation, so Jennifer in Greenville wants to know, is this Equifax free money? Is it real? Yeah, the Equifax uh, data breach, as you mentioned, it happened in 2010, and uh, the federal Federal Trade Commission slapped them with a fine of saying you have to pay up to seven hundred million dollars. Yeah. And so if you have credit monitoring, and I'm talking about Credit Karma or something like that, mm -hmm. then you'll be eligible to get one hundred twenty-five dollars back through the Equifax data breach, and it's okay. on their website. Um, and then if you have suffered, so some people when the data breach happened, they actually had their accounts hacked or they had things that popped up yeah. on their credit report that they had to get off. Um, if you can show the proof of that you can get uh, back $25 an hour up to 20 hours. So you can get from $125 up to $625 in some cases. All right, so you just have to go to the Equifax website and then there they'll have instructions right. that'll prompt you to put in your information to see what you qualify for. Yep. Okay, so we should, everybody should try Everyone to do, should that. do that. All right, and the last question that comes from Anne Marie and Aiken and she says, I'm about to be a college freshman and I heard that books for classes are expensive. So how do I save money on textbooks? And we both know we've been there. Books, those <laughs> fees can add up very quickly for those textbooks. Yes, yes. The books are out of control expensive. For, I, and I still don't understand why. But yeah. um, at the end of the day, I think that communication is going to help her the most and any other college students about to embark on this new journey. Um, talk to your professor and I mean just send them a quick email. Mm -hmm. I saw the syllabus, the textbooks on here. Can I use the last edition? Uh, I've saved over $40 you know on a hundred dollar textbook just with that one email and then uh, look at renting your own your yeah, textbooks. Yeah that's a good so idea too. Chegg.com you can rent some books on Amazon. There's different different ways you can rent books and possibly share books. So mm -hmm. get with a friend who's going to the same class. Make sure that you guys can trade off if you have different days. And there's so many ways to save on textbooks. But those are the big ones. I remember when I was at Winthrop University spending like $750 on textbooks and then at the end of the semester trying to sell those books back and they only wanted to give me like 200 bucks for it. So. Yeah I was gonna say I remember at Clemson <laughs> I, I, I bought a lot of my textbooks my first semester and then when I was giving them back I think I was able to buy a lunch. Yeah and that I was, was it. Like, what? I spent four hundred dollars on these books. So. Didn't even out there. Yeah, yeah. Renting is definitely the way to go if you can. All right, well we only got through three questions here, so if people do have some more questions for you, how can they get in contact with you? Uh, they can email me or they can find me on Instagram. That's the best place to find me or Twitter. And I'm no money Steve, K-N-O-W-M-O-N-E-Y-S-T-E-V-E.